For the last video in this section on rendering, let's discuss the supported and unsupported patterns of interleaving server and client components. This is best understood through examples, so let's dive straight into the code. Begin by creating a new route in the app folder, a new folder, and let's call it interleaving. And within the folder, create a page.tsx file. Use the pieces extension to insert the code for a page component. Next, within the components folder, create two files, one for a server component and one for a client component. Let's start with the server component. Create a new file called server component one dot tsx and use the pieces extension to insert the code for a server component. So pieces explorer, react server component, insert at cursor. This is server component one and server component one. Let's also include a server only operation like a file system read in this component. Import fs from fs and within the component body fs dot read file sync and we have a path we are not concerned about the result of read file sync method so we can skip the assignment duplicate this file so copy and paste and rename this to server component 2 dot tsx and update the component name as well as the heading. Component two, two, and server component two. With our server components set up, next, let's create another file. Once again, in the components folder called client component one.tsx. Here, use the pieces explorer extension to insert a React client component snippet. Let's call this client component one and client component one. Let's also include a client only operation like a use state call in this component. So import use state from React and within the component, let's set up a name state variable. The initial value is Batman. Once again, we are not concerned about the state variable and the setter function, so we can limit it to just invoking use state with a default value. We don't have to use name and set name. Duplicate this file, so copy and paste, and rename to client component 2. Update the component name and the h1 tag. Our setup is now complete. With two server components and two client components in place, let's discuss the different patterns. First is importing a server component into another server component. Now the component in page.tsx is a server component, but let's rely on the other two components we have created. So in page.tsx, import and invoke server component one. Inside server component one, import and invoke server component two. When you go to the browser and navigate to slash interleaving, you should see the route working without any issues. Next, let's look at importing a client component inside another client component. In page.tsx, import and invoke client component one. Within client component one, import and invoke client component two. Go to the browser 
and you should see the route working once again without any issues. Next, let's take a look at importing a client component inside a server component. In page.tsx, import and invoke server component 1. Within server component 1, import and invoke client component 1. So client component inside a server component. When you go to the browser, you should see the route working without any issues. We also see client component 2 output because it is nested inside client component 1. Finally, let's take a look at importing a server component inside a client component. In page.tsx, import and invoke client component 1. Within client component 1, import and invoke server component 1. In server component 1, Let's remove client component 1 to keep this simple. In the browser, you can see this will result in an error. Module not found can't resolve FS. This happens because any component, such as server component 1, nested inside a client component, such as client component 1, is automatically converted into a client component. Since client components are rendered after server components, you cannot import a server component into a client component module as it would require a new request back to the server. So although server component 1 is defined as a server component, when it is nested inside client component 1, it is converted into a client component which is executed client-side as well. And in the client environment, there is no file system module. Importing a server component into a client component is a pattern not supported in Next.js. However, there is a workaround. Instead of nesting server component in the client component, you can pass it as a prop to the client component. A common pattern is to use the React children prop to create a slot in your client component. So we remove the import and invocation of server component 1 from client component 1 and instead in page.tsx between opening and closing tags of client component 1 we invoke server component 1. Now in client component 1 we can specify that the component accepts children props and children is of type react.react node. And below each one, where we used to previously invoke server component one, we now specify children. If you go to the browser and refresh, you can see our route is working again. We have interleaving page, line component one, server component one. This is the supported and recommended pattern when interleaving server and client components. As far as the client component is concerned, it doesn't know children is a server component. All it needs to make sure of is render a placeholder for the children prop to be slotted in, which is in this case a server component. Now you're not limited to the children prop and you can use any prop on the client component. All right, that wraps up our second section on rendering in Next.js. We have covered a wide range of topics from client-side rendering, server-side rendering, suspense for server-side rendering, React server components, server and client components, the rendering lifecycle of React server components, static and dynamic rendering, streaming, and finally, various server and client composition patterns. I hope you now have a thorough understanding of rendering in the Next.js app router. If you're enjoying the playlist, please like, subscribe, and stay tuned for the next section.